Okay, so in this video what we're going to do is discuss the experimental technique of uh, colorimetry. And colorimetry is basically a way of um, finding out the concentration of protein or the concentration of DNA which you have in uh, a sample fluid, basically. So let's say we have a test tube here which contains uh, some water and in that water, or, or some fluid, or and in that fluid, uh, you have um, some protein, basically. So there are some protein molecules within that fluid. Let's say we want to know what the concentration of uh, those protein molecules is within that fluid. And basically, concentration is just um, number per a certain volume. So concentration is usually measured in, uh, in molars, so concentration in molars. And what that means is it means the number of moles of something, number of moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so what is a decimeter cubed and what is a mole? Well, a decimeter cubed is basically a litre, so one decimeter cubed is equal to a litre. A decimeter is 10 centimetres. So, um, about that sort of length there, that's about 10 centimetres, that's about one decimeter. So, a decimeter cubed is basically make a, a cube which is a decimeter by a decimeter by a decimeter. So, make a cube like this, okay, uh, which has all side lengths of decimeters. So, extend this one here and extend it up a decimeter and then extend it outwards for a decimeter and you'll get a decimeter cubed and that basically is one litre of, flu of fluid okay uh, or, or which is a thousand milliliters a milliliter by the way is one centimeter cubed so one milliliter is one centimeter cubed and this little cube that I've drawn here is probably just about one centimeter cubed okay um, all right, so that's what a decimeter cubed is. So basically it means if you took a decimeter of this sample, how many moles would be in it? That's what the concentration in molars means. And number of moles, well basically one mole is equal to, it's a great big number, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23 uh, molecules, basically. So if you have a mole of protein, which we're very unlikely to have, that means uh, you have um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 protein molecules, basically. So if one of these pink dots represents a, uh, a protein molecule, if you have a mole of them, you need that many pink dots, basically. Okay, so that's what a mole is. So basically, concentration says, okay, if we had a decimeter cubed of this fluid, how many moles would be in there? So how many molecules would be in there? And then you divide the number of molecules by this number in order to turn it into moles. So basically, say you have 12 times 10 to the 23 molecules, then if you divide it by 6.022, which will just approximate as 6 times 10 to the 23, you're going to get approximately 2. You'll get a number slightly less, but uh, it's going to be about 2. So that's what, what, we, what it means. Moles is basically just a more convenient measure of number of molecules. Rather than actually giving number of molecules, you give number of this many molecules, basically. So if you have two moles, it means that you have two times that many molecules, basically. And this number is known as Avogadri or as the Avogadrian constant, which is abbreviated MA, Avogadrian constant, or Avogadro's constant. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, we were doing colorimetry. Right, so we'd like to know what the concentration of this protein molecule, or maybe their molecules of DNA, is in that um, in our uh, sample. So basically, what you can do is you can use colorimetry, and basically, colorimetry is a very simple setup. You put a little bit of your sample into a little uh, container here. So we put in a bit of our sample into this container here. So here are other protein molecules, and here is the fluid. And basically, what you do is you shine light through that sample and basically um, the light 
can interact with the protein molecules. Specifically, you use a frequency of light, which is, two, sorry, not a frequency, a wavelength of light, which is 260 nanometers. That is quite a high frequency, a high, uh, a low wavelength for visible light. So it's near the uh, violet going into the ultraviolet region of the spectrum. Okay, so you shine this light through, and that's the, that, that is the wavelength of light you use if you are uh, doing protein, basically. And the reason you use that wavelength is because that wavelength interacts with proteins very well. So, when you shine lots of, uh, lots of this light, of this wavelength, through, these, uh, through this sample, then uh, the light is going to interact with the proteins. And if it interacts with the proteins, it's going to be absorbed, and it's not going to come out the other end. So the amount that comes through the other end, comes out the other end, is going to be much less than the amount that you put in. So what you do is you put a detector in here, and that, that measures how much light is coming out the other end, okay? The intensity of light coming out the other end. You know how much you put in, so you can work out the difference between that, and that's the amount that has been absorbed. So the absorbance, uh, the, absor the amount absorbed, uh, which I just called absorbance, is equal to uh, the amount that you put in, so starting amount, uh, starting intensity, maybe, is probably uh, a more scientific term, minus the, um, the uh, amount that is transmitted, so the transmitted intensity. Okay, uh, so um, from that you can work out how much has been absorbed, basically. And that, uh, that uh, the amount that is absorbed is dependent upon the, um, the concentration of the protein within here, i.e. how many protein molecules you have, how dense they are. If the protein molecules are very, very dense, then the light is more likely to, in to, to interact with one of those protein molecules. Whereas if they are very, very, um, you know, if they're much more, less dense, so if it's more like that, uh, then the light is much less likely uh, to uh, interact, and you're going to get much more being transmitted, so the absorbance is going to be lower. So basically, you can use the absorbance, the amount, uh, the difference between the amount of light that you start off with and the amount of light that you finish with, to get some understanding of how much, um, how, how, of the concentration of these protein molecules within there. Now, this is exactly, the exact same process is done for DNA, except that you use a slightly different wavelength. You use the wavelength of 280 nanometers. And that's just because DNA interacts more favorably with the light of that wavelength than it does 260 nanometers. So 260 nanometers is for protein, 280 nanometers is for DNA, but the principle is the same. And basically, what you find is that the absorbance of the light is actually directly proportional uh, to, um, to the concentration, i.e., if you double the concentration, the amount of light that is absorbed, i.e., um, the difference between the starting and the finishing light, the amount that is taken out, is, um, is doubled as well. So, what you can do is you can vary concentration. So, what you can do is you can get lots of protein samples. Um, so, you can get protein samples of known concentrations, okay? So, uh, let's say this one here is uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, molars, okay? And then you can get another one of known concentration. You can get 5 times 10 to the negative 6 molars. And then you might want to do another one. So let's say we do 10 times 10 to the negative 6 molars. And basically, you can do this experiment uh, where you put them through a colorimeter. And this is this setup here where you shine light through and then measure the light. That's known as a colorimeter. Okay, so this machine is a colorimeter. Colorimeter. Okay, and basically you can put these samples of protein of known concentration through the colorimeter. And basically you can plot a graph. You can uh, put their concentration on this x-axis, 1 times 10 to the six, negative 6, 5 times 10 to the negative 6, and then we have 10 times 10 to the negative 6. And what you find is that, um, and then if you plot for 1 times 10 to the 6 the absorbance on the y-axis, so you plot the concentration against absorbance, what you find is that they lie on a nice straight line, basically. And then what you can do is you can basically draw a nice straight line through there, like so. 
and then all you need to do is put your sample of unknown concentration through the colorimeter. You'll get some readout for the absorbance. So let's say this is the absorbance of our unknown concentration. Then all you need to do is look at what concentration on this straight line would have given you such an absorbance. And then you're done, basically. You have worked out what concentration should be uh, your unknown sample should have. Okay, so that mechanism is known as colorimetry, and you can do the same thing for DNA. You use a slightly different wavelength, but again, you take uh, samples with known concentrations of DNA, you would you put them through the colorimeter, you'd find out what their absorbance at that wavelength was, and you'd plot a graph like this, and you'd find that the points all lay on a straight line that goes through the origin, and you'd draw that straight line graph. And using that, you then uh, put your sample of unknown concentration through the colorimeter. You get an absorbent readout, and using the graph, you can then uh, deduce uh, what the um, concentration of the unknown um, sample must have been in order to give you that absorbance and lie on this straight line. Because this straight line should be correct, basically, because, as I say, absorbent, absorbent should be proportional to concentration. And that's a pretty intuitive result there, that absorbent is proportional to concentration. If you double the concentration, then you double the density of these molecules. You would think that you double the con double the chance that uh, a light molecule is going to be absorbed, wouldn't you? So, indeed, that is the case, and uh, it's experimentally verified that you do get a straight line. And this is a very uh, useful technique for quantifying the concentrations of protein and DNA.